And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, Tom Vassell here talking today. Uh, today I'm going to talk about the five starter decks for the Theros expansion uh, for Magic the Gathering. Maybe it's called Theros, I'm not sure. Um, now, Magic the this is the expansion that came out late September, early October 2013. For those of you who might be here who are big fans of Magic the Gathering, I need to be up front and tell you that I am basically a novice at Magic the Gathering. I played on a very casual level. I played it for many years, um, but I, I don't ever strive to make my decks tournament ready. I'm more interested in buying these starter decks and playing them against each other. I don't really change them very often. I might add a card or take a card out or, you know, mess with them a little bit, but I don't really change them very much. Uh, but I am interested to seeing how they work together. So there were five different dual colored decks that came with Theros. So I got them and I played them against each other. I don't know that I played every combination against each other. Um, but I came pretty close to playing all of them against each other. Uh, and here are my thoughts on each of the decks. You can see here, there's the five packs. We have the Manipulative Monstrosities, blue, red. We have the Blazing Beasts of Myths, red, green. We have the Anthalsa's Armies, green, white. We have the Devotion to Darkness, blue, black. And we have the Favors from Nyx which is white and black. So anyhow, you each one of these, I've already opened this one here, so you can see that it comes out and you have your deck of cards that comes out of this. Yay, let's just dump those everywhere. And then underneath that, you have the rules and something that talks a little bit about your deck. And then you have two booster packs from Theros. So let's see, and this, now these booster packs don't necessarily go with the deck at all. So. You have a bunch of cards here, Elspeth, Sun Champion, whatever. Okay, those, you don't have to mix in your deck, you can. And then this is the other pack that came in there. You can see that they're not necessarily cards, like this is not a, a black deck, but there's an Asiac Nightmare Weaver. So, whatever. Those are cards that are in those booster packs. You don't need them for this, but you can use them and put them in a deck if you want to. First deck we'll look at is the Blazing Beasts of Myth. A green-red deck here that has some basic, I love this guy, he has trample, he's a 2-1. But there's, you know, another Seder Piper here, which you can force someone else to be blocked this turn. And this 3-3 uh, three, three guy who's, you know, not too hard to bring out. It does have some your typical red do damage. This does 3 damage to someone. This does 4 damage to somebody. I like the Volcanic Geyser because it does X damage. You can basically range how much damage it will do to your opponent. And then you got some other cool stuff like this really giant creature here, Nemesis of Mortals. Uh, he, he's pretty expensive to bring out, but he costs less to bring out for each creature card that you've had killed. So get a couple of your small ones killed to bring out this 5-5 five, five creature who then can become monstrous. And, you know, again, he's very expensive to make monstrous, but if you have creatures in your graveyard, he's cheaper to bring out. And then when that happens, you put five more plus one plus one. So you can become a 10-10, which is a pretty cool thing. Anyhow, um, this is one of my favorite characters. I wish there was two of these in the deck because he has trample. He's protected from enchantments. And whenever he does combat damage, um, if he's monstrous and you want to make a monster as soon as possible, he destroys the target enchantment that that player controls. So that's a really cool card. I really like this guy. Probably my favorite character in this deck. But these not. there's a lot of giant creatures in this deck. There's this creature. Many of them have the ability to become monstrous where you pay and make them bigger like the giant here. Or the foil, the ember swallower. This guy I'm not so keen on because when he becomes monstrous, he's huge and powerful. But he destroys three lands from both players. And I don't, I'm, I don't know. I'm not a scorched earth type of guy. I don't really necessarily like having my own lands destroyed to have my opponent's lands taken out. Of course, here's another snake that could become monstrous. I like that. Then this is a card I like in this deck, the Portent of Betrayal, where you can take control of a target creature. Have a creature that's annoying you, take control of them and attack with them. Or the Windstorm, which can take out all your flying creatures, doing X damage to each of them. I like that one. This guy you can sacrifice to add three red to get one of your big creatures out more quickly. Minotaurs, of course, are always cool to have in the deck. And then this one here, Destroy an Artifact or Enchantment and then do two damage to them. Get rid of those artifacts and enchantments. This is a cool deck, the red-green deck. 
Then we have Anthousa's Army deck, uh, another deck with green and green white. Here's Anthousa herself, where she can turn um, three target lands into two two warrior creatures. That's pretty cool, I suppose. And I mean, it's such a neat concept, uh, but it's not as you know amazing as I wish. But again, she's not that expensive to bring out either. Pacifism, always a card. I love that in a deck. Make you can't attack with that giant creature. Sorry. Then you have this wimpy guy who's basically a forest who also can attack on his own. Giant growth, of course, is a lot of fun. Then you got some regular creatures in here. Uh, the deadly recluse, who if he does any damage to the opponent, they will they will just die. But one of the they got a flying creature in here, which is a lot of fun. But this creature here is important. They're a human knight. And they're heroic. Whenever you cast a spell that targets them, you put a plus one, plus one, or counter on them. Heroic. So whenever you use a spell on these people, they become plus one, plus one. So imagine using that giant growth on this guy. That makes him, uh, instead of a 2-2, two, two, he goes up to a 6-6. Six, six. And when he's done, he's still a 1-1. One, one. So if you put, cast another spell, he'll go up to 4-4, four, four, and he's flying. That's such a neat combo. And he's not the only one. There's a lot of heroic people. And when this guy has a spell cast on him, you get two life. Um, there's a really cool legendary artifact where you can, uh, everyone you have has death touch, not just your spiders. And then you can tap this to put plus one, plus one counter on a creature or to do two damage to a target creature that has flying or to heal three life or to put four target cards from your graveyard in the bottom of your library, which isn't that useful, but still expect to have this artifact destroyed by your opponent. And then you got these centaurs, a three, seven, I mean, nothing special, but a, a three, seven. And then there's more with those heroic things. This guy gets, if you get put two plus one plus one counters on him when he's heroic. This guy, when he's heroic, you put a plus one plus one counter and he takes no damage this turn. This guy gets a plus one plus one counter on each creature you control. This guy gets a plus one plus one counter, three of them when he's heroic. So this is a really big deal. So you, yeah, you can destroy your target creatures and you can choose a target creature and take them out. This is a great way to take out those annoying ones. You can choose them, and when they die this turn, you get three life, and then you can attack them, time to feed. But here you can target two creatures, and whenever they deal combat damage, draw a card. But this, this isn't nearly as important as the fact that you can target two creatures. Target two of your creatures, which will give you those plus one, plus one counters. Um, up two creatures each get plus two, plus two until the end of the turn. Yes! Not only do they have plus two, plus two, but they'll probably get some more benefits from being heroic. So I really like the fact that there's a lot of those cards in the game to be able to do that. And I like this one. When this guy comes on the battlefield, you draw a card if you control a creature with a plus one, plus one counter on it. Well, you almost definitely have that in this deck. And again, this one, I wish there was two of those in this deck. But still, I really enjoy the green-white deck in Thousa's Army. This deck is called Manipulative Monstrosities. It's a blue-red deck, and you usually think of green for monstrous creatures, but not so with this deck. you got some normal creatures in the deck um, that are there, and uh, there's some of this cool stuff, a lot of stuff that lets you scry in this deck. Return three creatures your opponent controls, scry one. A target creature gets minus three, scry one. When he enters the battlefield, scry two. Counter a target spell, scry one. I really like Dissolve. It's a great card. Counter your opponent's spell and scry one. I like that a lot. This card, there's a lot of damage cards in this deck, a lot of them. So there's two damage target player, exile, X target creatures, um, and change them into two, two pigs. I think that one's just a funny thematic flavor to it. Sacrifice this guy to do two damage. Uh, do X damage to someone, the volcanic geyser again. Put a target creature on top of their library. Put it, get, uh, return a target permanent to its owner's hand. Do two damage to target creature or player. Do four damage to target creature. Do three damage to target creature or player. So there's a lot of these in the game, a lot of this, but you're gonna be putting out some mega creatures here. Here's a six six that can become monstrous, which basically becomes a 10 10, huge. And when it becomes monstrous, you can tap up to four target creatures. They don't untap, they're in the controller's untap steps for as long as you control this guy. That is crazy powerful. This could be a game ending card like it a lot. Um, but it's not the only big creature. You can enchant a creature to put plus one, plus one counters. The Water Servant's a 3-4, and you can increase and decrease its attack and power. Um, and then there's just some Stone Shock Giants, big creatures that you can make monstrous. So a lot of fun creatures in this deck. And there's even in this deck, there's some guys who...
And there's one more guy in this deck I like, the Sea Lock Monster, where it's a 5-5, five, five, and it could become an 8-8, eight, eight, but it can't attack unless your opponent has an island. But once you make it monstrous, your opponent, you can change one of their lands into islands so you can attack them. Lots of fun. The next deck is the Devotion to Darkness deck. Uh, this comes with a, it's really interesting how this deck works because you have this, some, this is a pretty big gi giant blue flying creature and then you got smaller black flying creatures, these harpies, which are really annoying. Flying lifelink, this one when it comes on a field, each player loses a life. These are really annoying for your opponents. So having the large creatures and the small creatures, but the insatiable harpy, the flying lifelink, I like quite a bit. But there's also a lot of just in-your-face style cards. I mean, here, target creature minus four, minus four to the end of the turn. Uh, the target creature gets plus two, regenerate it, and then you lose two life, which, you know, hurts you a little bit, but can keep that one creature alive or do two damage to target creature, and you get two life. Or just kill a target creature, and then its controller destroys two life. You know, I'm going to knock you down and then snap you around a little bit. Now here you can bring two creatures back from the graveyard into your hand. Here you can put target creature on top of its opponent's library. And there's a couple uh, blue cards in the deck that let you manipulate cards and let you scry cards and look at cards of your library and things like that. Here you can enchant a creature. This is interesting. You can put plus one points counters on it every time this creature attacks. When there's three, you sacrifice it and draw two cards. This, there's a lot of auras like this in Theros, and I think they're pretty cool because you could put them on your own creature or sometimes put them on an opponent's creature knowing that if they attack often enough, you're going to get some sort of benefit. But this game, this deck is called Devotion to Darkness because there's a lot of cards in it that help you depending on your devotion to black. Like, for example, when he enters the battlefield, each opponent's going to lose X life where X is your devotion to black. And you count the number of these tokens on all the permanents you control, and that's your devotion to black. And that's going to be pretty powerful. This guy has devotion to black where that your target player will reveal that many cards and then you can choose them. You choose one of them, that player discards that card. So you can make them reveal their whole hand and get rid of a good card. Um, this guy, when he comes on the battlefield, X target creatures gain intimidate and haste. Again, how many is that? Your devotion to black. And then this really nasty guy, the foil, a huge flying creature, and he brings out a bunch of 1-1 one, one black harpy flying creatures equal to your devotion to black. You bring him out at the right time, you will swarm your opponent with just evilness. These return phalanx, it's a really cheap 3-3. Three, three. It's only a defender, can't attack, but you can spend a blue and a mana to make it be able to attack each turn. And then you can bring people back from the underworld. I like this quite a bit. Um, when you, to, to cast this card, you have to sacrifice a creature but then you're going to pick a creature in a graveyard, bring that, and the sacrifice card back. So you send someone to death to bring back somebody. It's a pretty cool concept, and this whole deck, it's a little darker, but wow, does it do damage. And the most interesting deck, I think, in this one, and that's Favors from Nyx. It's a white-black deck here. When this card enters the battlefield, you can return target enchantment. There's a lot of cards here that you've seen before, probably if you play Magic, Pacifism. Um, some regular troops like this Traveling Philosopher. I don't even know why he's in the deck. Um, here you can do two damage and you gain two life. If creature of power, he, there's a lot of ways to destroy other creatures. Exile target creature with power two or less. Its controller gains four life. So you can kill one of your own to get four life or get rid of an annoying small creature your opponent has. Destroy a target creature with power four or greater and scry one. Destroy a target non-black creature. You're going to be less nailing your uh, opponent's wall. Those big creatures from the other deck, pff, this guy doesn't care. So there's a lot of these things in this deck. A lot of Banisher Priests, I like him. Destroy a target enchantment to give myself life. Uh, creatures I control have lifelink. That's really neat. A great artifact. I like these legendary enchantment artifacts. Each opponent loses life. You get life equal to that amount. Flying Vigilance, pay three life to regenerate this guy. A really neat creature. They need to have two of these double-colored creatures in each of these decks. Enchant Creatures, put plus one, plus ones on them. Enchanted Creature, this is a really cool card. When they die, they come back. And then this card comes back on them at the end of the turn. So they're nigh invulnerable. If they're killed in between then and now, uh, be, you know, when they, after they die, if you kill them right away after they come back to life, then they're dead forever. But still a pretty neat card to put in the deck. But this deck here has one of the new features of the Theros, and this is the only one of the five starter decks that really this is concentrated on, 
although there's lots of cards from different colors, and that's this Bestow. Basically, these are creatures that when they have Bestow, you can cast it as a enchantment spell onto another creature. So this guy is a 4-4 four, four flying creature with first strike. But if I, ca if I Bestow it on another creature, that creature is plus 4, plus 4, and has flying and first strike. Which is a really neat idea. The Bestow cost is much more. But that's neat. So there's lots of bestows. Like this guy, you can bestow on someone to give him plus two, plus two, and give him intimidate. This one, you just give someone plus three, plus three, and they can tap somebody. This person can bestow someone to give him a plus three, plus three. This person gives him plus one, plus one, and has death touch. The enchanted creature is plus one, plus one, and has life link. Plus two, plus two, and they have vigilance. And so these are really neat. This is one of my favorite decks to maneuver, although there's some difficulties because of the white and black mix. If you don't draw enough swamps um, or, you know, in, at the beginning of the game uh, or planes, it's very possible that you won't be able to cast half the spells in your deck. It can be really frustrating if that happens. But if it, if it works out well in the cards that you draw, this is a really cool, devastating, nasty deck. Well, that's it, basically. I don't want to go into much more thought on these games uh, other than what I did here, but I did like this set a lot. Now, uh, I did the decks, if you may notice, in order from my least favorite to my most favorite, which is odd because I never would have thought that a black-white deck would have been my favorite. But I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that, the fact that I really like the bestow ability. I think that's a neat ability. And even though most of the cards that I got in these extra packs, you know, I got two packs in each one, so I have a whole pile of extra um, cards from Theros, uh, all the Bestow ones, I'm looking at them saying, can I stick these in these other decks and use them somehow? Because I think they're neat cards. And so I might use those, even, uh, even though I probably won't use the rest of those cards. But so it's a neat expansion. Um, it, there was nothing mind-blowingly difficult about this new Bestow ability. It's a really cool effect. You put it on someone, it's like an enchantment, and when the, that creature dies, the enchantment comes off and becomes a creature. That's really a cool ability, uh, and it has a good thematic flavor, the aura of the spirit, uh, helping you, making you stronger and cooler. So, uh, are these decks worth getting? I, I think so. Um, I would only get maybe a couple of them uh, to play against each other, and some of them... I, I noticed that the, the two decks that had black in seemed to whoop up on the other decks pretty easily. Maybe that's just uh, because we don't know how to use the decks that are full potential yet. They seemed a little bit better than the other ones. But overall, a very enjoyable experience, and I hope that helps you see which of those decks you might want to get. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Shut the door! Yeah.